This video is made possible by today's sponsor, TunePocket. If you make videos, then you know that finding the right music is always a challenge. Check out TunePocket. It's a new music library that offers both unlimited subscriptions and small download packs if you just need a couple of songs. Right now they have some good deals, especially if you make commercial videos or if you monetize your YouTube channel. Even if you're getting your music from another library, check them out via the link below, you may be surprised. Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak FX. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my top five camera transitions and actually how to film them and edit them. So let's dive straight in. Now, I honestly love whip pans, but I do tend to see them overused a little bit. Now you have to ask yourself, why do people keep using them? And that's because they're easy to do and they're a really effective transition. So the trick with this transition is to start filming your subject or scene and quickly pan the camera to the left or the right. If you panned your camera from the left to the right in clip A, begin your clip B by panning in from the left to the right. Also try to match the speed of your pan out to your pan in. To get the best results with this transition, I find that you want to film at a slower shutter speed. Now a simple technique is to set your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So if I'm shooting at 30 frames a second, I just simply want to double my frame rate to 1 60th of a second. And that's going to maintain that natural motion blur. Also try changing the focal length by zoom zooming in or out. You can start on a wider shot for instance and then pan into a close-up. Now again it's really important that you match the pan direction. So if I pan out in one direction I want to pan in using that same direction. Now once you've filmed your two clips all you have to do is jump over to After Effects or Premiere and then we're ready to start editing. So with my first clip on the timeline I'm just simply going to create a cut at exactly where that point of the height of the transition is. Then once I've found that point, I'm going to drag my second clip underneath and I'm simply going to create a cut at the height of that transition in. Now the best part about this is because you've got two shots that already have a lot of motion blur and it's quite fast, you can simply just transition using a straight cut. Now if you want, you can also add or exaggerate this effect by adding a simple speed ramp over the top and you can also add some additional directional blur depending on the amount of motion blur that you're actually going for. Now the fill transition is another really simple yet effective transition that involves just actually pushing the camera completely behind something. So you can start by filming your scene or subject. In this case, I'm rotating the camera around my subject and then I'm moving the camera into a part of my subject like the arm or the back to completely fill the screen. Now for my second shot, I'm gonna start in a similar position and I'm going to pan the camera out. Now here I'm using a dark spot behind my subject so it matches up nicely with my last shot. Now to get the best results, you want to completely fill the screen. Now it's also really important that you try and match the speed between your two shots. So if I'm rotating the camera around my subject, I wanna keep that camera moving at the same speed between my two clips. Now over in After Effects or Premiere, I can simply put my two clips on the timeline and I'm going to create a cut at exactly that point where my subject fills my entire screen. Now I can do the same with my second shot and position it underneath and you can see we pretty much have the finished effect. Now another thing you can do is also add a very slight fade using the opacity settings to get a nice blend transition. Now another technique you can use here is to actually add a speed ramp over the top. So now with the speed ramp, you can see that we've just helped exaggerate that overall transition. And that's really going to help make the whole transition look really seamless. Now frame blocking is where we actually have something cover the entire screen and then we draw a mask to reveal our shot underneath. Here you can see that I actually had a person walk in front of my camera as I then transition to a tighter shot. So we can start by filming our scene as normal and then you want someone or something to actually pass in front of the camera. Now it's really important that it completely covers the entire frame. To get the best results again, make sure that you have a slower shutter speed of at least double your frame rate. So if I'm shooting at 30 frames a second, I wanna set my shutter speed to be 1 60th. Now over in After Effects or Premiere, I can simply drop my first shot onto the timeline. Then I can find that point where my subject actually comes into frame. And I wanna come over here to the pen tool and simply just draw a mask 
that runs along the edge of my subject. Then by using some mask keyframes, I can simply just animate that mask moving across my screen. I can also add a little bit of feather just to help feather out that edge. And then it's just a matter of dropping our second shot straight underneath. Now the best thing about this is we don't actually have to do anything with the timing of our second shot because it's going to automatically reveal that second shot because we created that mask. Now I really like this one because it's a mixture of a few techniques but it can be really effective in revealing a new location in an interesting way to your viewers. So with this transition, I want to start on the hardest part first and then move to the easiest part. So for the hardest part, we want to start with our camera against the iPhone. Then I'm going to pull backwards slowly past my subject's head and upward to reveal the location. Also note the screen doesn't have to be on as we'll replace this later. So to get the best results, make sure you start with your camera right up against that screen. So we want the iPhone screen or the phone screen to completely fill and cover our video. Also make sure your subject's fingers don't cover the front of the screen because then we'll have to do additional rotoscoping to remove them out. So once we've filmed our video, we can simply jump over to After Effects or Premiere. So with my first shot in the timeline, I want to come up to Animation and down to Track in Mocha. Now I can use the spline tool to draw a large tracking mask which runs around the outside of my screen. Then I can track completely forwards and then backwards to get my complete track. Once that's done, I can then come up and hit this little cog icon next to my layer one, and then I can create a new spline, which is going to be the part of the screen that I actually want to remove. Now with this layer selected, I also want to turn off that cog icon, and under the layer properties, I want to make sure that the link to track is set to my first layer. Now I can turn off my layer one. Now I can save my project and back in After Effects, I want to come down to the matte settings and select apply masks. Then I can hit the invert mask settings. And with my second layer now underneath, I can come up to the tracking data and then click on create track data. Now I want to make sure the cog icon is on for our layer one, which is the layer with all the track information. Then I can come down and make sure that the second layer or the second clip is selected and make sure that the export option is set to transform. Now I can apply that tracking data to that second layer. And if I bring up the transform properties, I want to delete all of the scale keyframes. Then I want to find the part in the video where the iPhone screen comes into full view and then I want to delete the first position and rotation keyframes. Now I can create a new scale keyframe at that position. Then if I go back to where the second clip completely fills my frame, I can then scale down that layer to fill the screen. Now it's just a matter of animating a few scale keyframes throughout the video so it roughly matches the size of my screen. Now one final step here is to create an adjustment layer and then line it up with the start of my top clip. Then if I drag that underneath, I can now apply a blur. Then I can create a blur keyframe at the start. And if I go across to where my phone starts to go out of focus, I can then start to add a little bit of blurriness. Then when we play through, you can see I get a transition from my second shot backwards through the screen to reveal my first shot. Now, rotational transition is a really good way to give you a unique perspective in your video. Now, I find this technique actually works best when you pull the camera backwards through a tight space or close to something giving you a really unique perspective. Now this one is much easier if you already have a gimbal, but you can do it after by zooming in on your video and using the rotation properties. Now find this technique to look best when you pull the camera back and you use the rotation function on the gimbal to slowly rotate the camera in one direction. Now make sure when you're filming that you're also using the same settings and that you're roughly the same distance from your subject. Also make sure you're rotating in the same direction and the same speed for both of your shots. Now over in After Effects or Premiere, we simply want to drop our two clips onto the timeline and we want to line them up so that we create a cut at the point that the horizons 
are lined up nicely. So here I've just created a cut at roughly the point in which my horizons line up. And now when I actually play through, you can see that we already have a straight cut. Now to exaggerate this effect, I'm also going to add some speed ramping over the top of my two clips and that's going to give it a really nice transition. Now along with the speed ramp, I also recommend adding some rotational blur over the top to really help make it a smooth, seamless transition. So there you go guys, there's my top five camera transitions transitions. I hope you learned something in this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Also, a big thank you for today's sponsor, Tune Pocket. You could check them out via the link in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.